Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. Recently I've had a number of uh, requests uh, to show how to do rosettes for guitars and uh, ukuleles. So, okay, we'll start possibly short series on those as they come to mind. There are no hard and fast rules as far as I can see, but uh, some luthiers will do it one way and others will do it another way. Uh, try not to get constipated over it and I have uh, developed a few techniques of my own that work for me uh, at the level that I am at. So if you'd like to know how I've done some of those uh, techniques, here are a few. Now the first one that I tried doing was this kind, just made out of little bits of leftovers. It's quite nice in that you, the wood reflects at different angles and, and the light shines off it like the sun when you're playing it sort of shimmers. So it's quite easy to do, so let's do that one. Now in all of the ones that I've done so far, I have used a board. A board with a nail in the middle and a circle, the diameter, the inside diameter of the rosette. Goes there, and here's one the size of a ukulele. And we get a piece of second hand paper, stick it on there, and we are ready to go. Then I get some uh, off cuts that just leftovers from doing the tops and things of interesting colours, and I'm going to just cut those with a knife or otherwise or saw. With a sandpaper on a broom stick I can angle that so that when I sand it I'm going to get an ang a, a curve that is similar to that. And just a little bit of glue, I'm going to put it down on the paper to start my run. Using a straight edge of some description, I'm going to butt that against the, the uh, nail and then make sure that that is lined up. And with a sharp knife, just trim the excess so that it's coming out properly. And then we'll select a different colour. butt that up to the to the cylinder and then parallel cut with your knife parallel with the other cut so now that will fit in properly and then and then a little dab of glue there and put it on the edge and but it in. And then while it's drying, you're gonna move that around and cut that excess piece off there. And when that's dry, I can pop that off the, the board and with a compass, mark the outside diameter of that is it. Then very carefully on the edge of the table I'm going to cut reasonably close to that edge, cut off the excess. And then I can sand it to that line. So there's one technique. A variation on that is to put little lines in between those. To do that we can take a three ply that is at least as wide as that, put it on your bench here and a little nail at two millimeters so that when I cut that I have my little strip to go in between. So I can glue one of those, one of those sticks, then one of those, then one of the other. You can stripe it or same colour, it doesn't matter, and go around that way. Now as you can see, they look a little bit nicer delineated with borders inside and outside or either one or the other or whatever, of different colours. You can combine those to however you want. 
Now I spent a lot of time uh, breaking little sticks like that, trying to bend them and steam them and this and that until I got sick and tired of that and decided to invent something a little bit easier, which was these, which can, you can sand up those edges and put them in nicely and on the outside as well of different colors and you can mix and match and combine. And what is that easier method? Uh, what's it made out of? Wood shavings. With a clean edge stick clamped to the table so that that comes nice and uh, clean on the edges. About, uh, what's that? A centimeter, I suppose. And my plane to as thick as I can actually push it, which it may be half a millimeter, a millimeter, and get myself a nice, uh, reasonably thick shaving of different colors. Now you can use them dry if they're thick enough, but I like to wet them because if you've got time to do this part, it, it stretches them out and gets them nice and flat and workable and not twisted and warped. And then let them dry. Now if you are in a hurry and you don't want to wet it, you can put the glue straight on and that will wet it. And so that by the time you put that on, it will wet it. And what the wetting does, it will make it stretch. Sometimes clamping it here, putting the glue on and then running your finger up and down to apply some pressure will help to stretch it straight and glue it. Then take something circular like this cup, no smaller than that circle or the diameter that you're wanting to make the ring out of, and that for, for example, for a guitar. And then, glue side out, I can wrap that round. And when it's wet, it will stretch. And then I'm going to put another layer on on top of that. So I've just clamped the ends of those secure so they don't shift and I'm making sure that it's really squashed in there so there's no gap between the two uh, layers. And that's going to stay like that. The two layers means that when you take it off it's going to stay in a circular shape and there's no strain on it and it's not going to snap on you when you put it in the rosette. Now we can save ourselves some time making several at a time by splitting this and with a knife on a broomstick and because we're going with the grain it's not too hard to split with the knife and you can go between two or up to maybe four layers at once and can split them reasonably thinly. Now you can take some of those that are now dry and start gluing them one by one, making sure that when you glue them that they are well tight around there so that there are no gaps between. They do tend to stretch slightly when they're wet so that when you put them on, do that first and after a little while, come back again before the glue sets and just push that around again to make sure that any stretch is taken up so there are no gaps. Now the first one is a bit tricky because you don't want to get any glue on the disc and glue those to the disc. So I prefer it like um, one way is uh, put a couple of sticks there to, to clamp it there with some, a couple of clamps so it's in position. And then I'm going to apply the glue to this one to then put it in here. Thank you. 
And then you come up with something like this. And when it's in the guitar or ukulele, it can look quite spiffy. And it's just wood shavings. So you can do some interesting things with lines, different combinations of lines. The next is to start including little spots and dots, alternating ones or various patterns into those lines. And you can get some quite delicate and pretty looking ones like that. Dots, let's look at them. Now for this one, we're gonna need a base of some uh, wood shaving some matchsticks maybe if you've got some or some bits of wood and or some bits of wood so with a board with a notch cut out of it to give me the length I'm going to start cutting a whole bunch of little sticks to length of the different colors that I want to use in my pattern Cut a bunch of other ones of roughly the same as the matchsticks. I will apply some glue to that strip and then line up those sticks in a row. Clamping a straight edge to that also helps and also make sure that the, the brown ones that I cut, they're gonna have a side that is regular and one that isn't regular. Uh, you want to put the regular side widthwise and the irregular up and down. You see it that way, it'll be that way. Now remember when we cut that, uh, those brown sticks, we cut it out of a board that, that was of a certain thickness, but when we cut them, it's possible that we cut them all sort of a little irregular. So by taking the height of that and putting on its side, you're gonna get the regular uh, spacing of the height of the board, but the, uh, the height of the sticks are going to be up and down a little bit. So we need to fix that. We get a block with a couple of sticks on there and a little piece of sandpaper on that and that will give us a height depth and then we can sand that down to an even height and that gives you a nice even stick now we can once again save ourselves some time by splitting that down the middle into something a bit thinner and that we can do just as an example here with a knife but because you're going across the grain it's going to be a little bit more tricky so we just do it little by little to give that a little bit more strength we can take another remember that one that we dried it's nice and straight and then I'm gonna stick that on clamped it to my cup and apply some glue. Then I'll put my little strip on there with the wood shaving on the outside. Now the wood shaving on the outside will compress the lines on the inside so that any cracks and imperfections will compress in and you'll get a very tight spotty ring making sure that that is nice and tight and then you're going to get a nice spot so there we have it quite nice uh, it's fairly stiff and therefore splitting it is going to be a little bit difficult with a knife particularly since you're going against the grain of those uprights so we will have to use carefully a saw to split it And there we have two nice little spotty ones to go into another rosette. 
Now, to get a little bit more complicated, we could have some patterns that rather than dark light, dark light, we can start doing the patterns. Now, instead of doing them all individually, one by one, we can save ourselves a lot of time by taking a stick of a determined thickness and change the color and make a stack of them and glue them together so that when we cut them and cut them and cut them and cut them, we're going to get little blocks rather than individual sticks. We could do it, for example, in the case of this color, these colors, we could have a sequence, say, this color, those colors, for example. Clamp them and leave them to dry. Now we need to cut a strip of that, about two millimeters wide. It's a good idea just to give that a little bit of a coat of carbon, or what do you call it, the, of glue, just to help hold it together when you're cutting it to length. Now we can put our nail on this cutting thing a little bit wider. So now we can go through the process a lot quicker using the tiles rather than individual sticks. Now there is a disadvantage with doing tiles is that even though it's quicker, between each of the tiles there aren't enough spaces for that tile to compress as you're putting it around the cup unless it's really quite thin and in this case uh, that won't stretch and that has to compress so you might be able to get a thinner one going but if you want to do it thicker like in this case um, it won't st stretch and I had to cut that to stop it wrecking itself and I'll have to sand this off and replace it uh, to save that one but what you can do is apply those tiles directly to the wood shaping on the cup itself and it is a good idea if you use some sandpaper to clean off those very edges and also put it on a slight angle like that and give it just a light sand on each edge so that when it goes on it will be slightly trapezoid. When you put that on there there's not going to be any gap whatsoever between Then you have to sand it smooth, get lumps and bumps out of it, make it even before putting your next layer of wood shaving on. So there we have uh, those different kinds of rings with dots. Now the next one is to do start doing these checker pattern combinations, but I think uh, we will need to leave that for another, the next video, checker patterns and other things.